lookup that will bring back multiple rows of data, not just one line. So what I've got here at the bottom is a list of people and the courses that they have done. So what I want to happen is if I select a person like I have here, I want it to bring back their courses. So if I type in there Smith, for example, press enter on that, it will just bring back Smith's courses. So he's just done four courses from this list. So that's what I want to do. Now, before I do it, there are a few things that you have to put in place to get this to work. And one of them is this little helper column where I've got a count if function going on there to count how many repeating items there are in this list. So you can see it's going one, two, three, four, five there. So there's five Saxtons, one, two, three, four Smiths. That's what that's doing. So that's just a straightforward count if function. So if I do it on this column, equals count if, open the bracket. So basically I want to count that and what you have to do is do a colon and click it again, comma, and then D14. Again, I'll have to type that now because it's in the way. I want to lock that one though with the F4 function key, dollar sign in that one. And then if I tick that, that tells me at the minute there's one, but if I pull it down, it tells me that there are four and all the way down it starts changing over because after five that's Smith. So basically if you look at it, it's starting, that's locked. So this list starts on the same line and then this will just go to 15, D15, etc, D16 and that's how that works. So that is like the little helper column that we need. And also, I then need to use concatenation to link these two together, like I've got up here, look. Just, well, it's not concatenation, really. It's just getting yourself a little space. And I want it to have a number, this number, and the name. So it's equals that. And then the concatenation symbol is the and sign. And I want a space. That's all I'm doing. It's nothing really technical. But you do have to have another concatenation symbol to join these two items together. Click the tick on that, and I'll pull that one down. So that's the same list as that. You can see it's picking up the numbers. And then now I'm ready to do my lookup with a color that cell in. I'll just type Saxton for this. So this has to also use the concatenation fe uh, feature. Put course there. And I need these numbers as well. So this is a list. It can be however however big this list is. You basically, in terms of items, you just you just need to list them down there because you're going to use those as the numbers to concatenate your data. And then this is where the VLOOKUP goes. So the VLOOKUP is in there. I've got an if error function in front of it to hide any any blanks, which is what's happening here. But I'm just going to do the VLOOKUP first off, and you can see the first part of it. I'm needing to do the concatenation between what's in cell G21 um, and then G1. So in this case, the concatenation would be between that cell. If I change that to a different colour, you see that. Get it to come up eventually. That'll do. So that light green. So I'm typing equals V lookup and opening the bracket. So now I need to click on this cell, that's the first thing, but then it needs to be concatenated with that cell. So this is where the AND sign comes in. Open quotes, do a space, close quotes, AND sign again, click on the name. That's what I want to happen. And this needs to be dollar sign, this bit here, because the name part of it doesn't want to move when I pull this down, but the number part of it, this G... 14 wants to come down g15 etc so i'm just going to f4 that so you're looking at that comma i'm looking at this table so this this whole table um i'll go highlight the whole lot comma i want column four which is the course column comma zero and then close the bracket now the table, I have not named it, so I need to F4 that as well. So lock in that table, click the tick, that comes up with Excel, pull it down. So it's the same as that one, um, it's only coming down to five. 
So if I change that to Smith, that should be exactly the same. Yeah, so that's coming down to four. But we've got these two NAs at the bottom. So that's where the if error comes in. So in front of all of this, if I get in front of the V of V lookup, I'm going if error, opening the bracket on that. So if all of this returns NA, go right to the end of it, comma, quote, quote means leave it blank. And then you close in the if error bracket like that at the end. Now, if I tick that, that should work. It won't do anything on the first one. But when I pull that down now, it gets rid of these two. So I'm just going to, let's see if I can copy this formula for you. If I copy that, and just need to tick that for a minute. Just paste it in here. So that is the actual formula that I'm using. I've actually called that cell there name. So that's why it says the word name. But that is the formula. If I come across a little bit, you can see how it sits. That is the formula. So the helper column formula, if I go and get that one for you, just so you can see how that works. I'll just copy that out of there. Copy, control C, making sure I'm not getting the equals. Click the tick. And then just stick that, I'll just stick that there so you can see that as well. So those are the main two functions that I've used. But what it's doing is allowing you to have um, a VLOOKUP to return multiple options, which is a bit similar to the filter function that you get in Excel. But hopefully that's little videos of use. Thank you for your time. I'll catch you on the next one.